Hello. Today I will cover how to find articles in some of our art databases. From the Cerritos College database page, you can click on databases by subject. If you're ever confused about which databases are best for art, this subject tab can be a really great resource. If you scroll down, you'll see that we do have an art tab right here. And some of our best ones are Grove Art Online, Gale eBooks, and today I want to cover art and architecture source. So I will click on that link and it's going to open up into EBSCOhost, which is the larger company that supplies the art and architecture source database. Now in this database, it's good if we can start general, pretty broad, and then narrow down our subject a little bit. So I'm gonna type in Botticelli, the name of a famous painter, and that's all I'm gonna type in. I don't type in an entire thesis statement, I don't type in a sentence, I start with just the subject term and that's it. So Botticelli, I want to get the proper subject term for Botticelli, how it, that person is described. I'm just going to copy and paste the first part of this subject term because I don't want to get too, too specific. So I'm just going to replace that very quickly. And you can see I have 761 results. I want to limit to articles that are full text only. 700 becomes 99. And this limits you to the library's subscription. So now every article will have a full text attachment underneath it. You can also limit by a date range. Now for art, this may or may not be all that important because an article that was published in 1940 might just be as relevant as an article published last year. This is usually um, more of an issue when it comes to topics that change rather frequently like global warming or Black Lives Matter or anything along those lines. Now your professor might also require you to use scholarly, academic, or peer-reviewed journal articles. All those words are interchangeable. They mean the same thing and there is a button for that as well. So if you need scholarly articles, make sure you check this box too. And of the 99 articles, it looks like about 50 of them are scholarly. Now I can take that away, peer review, and go back to our 99, and under source type, it'll tell us exactly what we're looking at. So 45 are academic journal articles, 37 are popular magazine articles, 11 are book reviews, and two are actually eBooks that you could have full text access to. So if you're interested in that, make sure you um, take a look at that link as well. So under the subject terms, the way that we narrow down our 100 results to something maybe a little bit more relevant is to take a look at subject terms. So if I'm interested in Botticelli, what else about Botticelli might I want to limit it to, such as um, Botticelli and symbolism, Botticelli and the 19th century, Botticelli and Jewish artists, these are just suggestions. Of course, you can keep scrolling and get other ideas. Um, women in art, painting, feminine beauty. Um, so I think I would like to limit to Botticelli and symbolism. So I'm going to copy that subject term. And what I will do next is click on advanced search. Now, instead of one search bar, you now have three. And visually, I like how this separates it a little bit easier. You can technically do it on one line, but visually, I think this is a little bit more easy or more pleasing, I should say. So we put our differing terms on two separate lines, and this tells the computer that your only one articles where these two subject terms intersect. So our result list should become less and less as we narrow down our field. So Botticelli and Symbolism, 99 results talk about, sorry, 99 becomes 20. And those 20 also mention symbolism. Now in your paper, you may talk about Botticelli and um, different paragraphs may deal with different aspects of Botticelli. So it's a good idea to pull out the key terms from each of your sub paragraphs and search for those individually. Sometimes putting them all together in one search will yield you only one or two articles and that won't be very helpful for your paper. So if you can write in on the second line all the different things that you're interested in such as symbolism 
or Christian, Renaissance. Uh, let's see what else. 19th century, some of the things I mentioned before. If you can pull out all those um, key terms and search for them individually while keeping Botticelli on this top line, you will get a better result list. Now make sure we keep our limiters, the same ones we had before, full text. So it turns out only seven of those 20 articles we have full text access to. Now when I have a result list this small, you might need five to 10 resources for your entire paper and for each subparagraph, maybe only one or two. So it could be that these seven articles is all that you might need for your paper. However, if you wanted to expand your search a little bit more, EBSCOhost is a big company and they have many more databases than just art and architecture, which is one of their smaller ones. So if we click on choose databases, these are actually all the different products that Cerritos College subscribes to. And any college or public library that has a subscription to EBSCOhost likely has access to more than one of their databases. Now you could always select all of them. However, this might lead to a very slow search. It is an option, but usually I just include academic search complete and you can see we've got all different types of databases. There's one for theater and dance. There's one for business. There are several for psychology, sociology. Greenfile is an environmental database. There's a business database. There's a lot of health ones because of the nursing and dental programs on campus. So you can see that this database or this company provides access to a lot of different types of resources. However, Academic Search Complete is one of their more broad databases. You can see from the description here that it is multidisciplinary, meaning that it includes a lot of different disciplines, and so is Masterfile. They're both multidisciplinary. So when I'm searching for additional resources, I usually like to click on those databases as well. So I'm going to click OK, and now instead of one database, I'm searching in three. Oops, I want to make sure I include the art and architecture one as well. Oh, and art full text, we can include that too. Okay, so now instead of one database, we are searching in all four of these. So we can broaden our search just by including more resources. So we had seven results, and now Click on full text one more time. Make sure you always have that checked. Looks like we only ended up with one more article. Perhaps symbolism isn't the best um, subject term to include. Maybe there's just not that many articles written. If I include every single one of these databases, let's see how my result list might change then. We had seven, then eight. Click on full text, don't forget. And now we go down to, did that check? Full text. Okay, looks like it remained 22. So from eight, we now have 22 results. And then if we look at source types, 31 of them are journals and then nine are magazines. So the bulk of them are actually scholarly articles, which is great. So including all of the databases did help in this instance. Always play around with what you do, what subject terms you add, what databases you include, what types of sources you're looking at. Always be aware of what your professor requires. But these are just a couple suggestions that we have for how to use EBSCOhost properly. Now when you find an article that you do like, you can click on the title. Now, of course, you have the PDF full text access here, but over here on the right-hand side under tools, make sure you take a look at that. So you are currently signed in under the Cerritos College subscription. And if you were to walk away from your computer or close your laptop, exit out of your phone, whatever, this tab will sign you out. So you wanna make sure that you have access to this article once you leave this tab. And the best way to do that is to email the article to yourself so that it's waiting for you in your inbox and you don't have to go back to the library homepage, sign into EBSCOhost, search for Botticelli and Symbolism. 
you don't have to go through this entire process again. You want to make sure that you email the article to yourself so that it's just waiting there for you and it's super easy. Now all of this defaults, the PDF attachment will automatically be included. The citation format does not default, so you want to make sure you're selecting the correct one if your professor is requiring APA, MLA, or Chicago. Make sure you're um, selecting the correct citation format, and that way it will be included in the email that is sent to you. Now, of course, you always want to double check it because computers aren't perfect, and we have several helpful um, libguides about how to format citations, but usually what EBSCOhost provides is pretty darn good. So make sure you're including the citation as well. And then you just type in your email address. It could be your school email. It could be your personal. It really doesn't matter. And then you'll have that waiting for you. Okay, and those are just some really quick tips about how to use EBSCOhost. Remember that you can include additional terms by clicking on Advanced Search. Always take a look at the subject terms underneath the description of the article to get ideas for additional terms that you could type in. Make sure that you're properly describing your search terms. And then make sure that you're clicking on full text and including the correct databases in your search. And then always email the article to yourself so you have easy access to it in the future. And the citation, which is very helpful. Okay. So those are just some quick tips and tricks we have for you. And lastly, I just want to remind you that if you ever have any questions on how to use the database from any page on the library um, homepage, you'll notice that there's a chat with a librarian feature here over on the right. And whenever the library is open from 7.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday and until 3 o'clock on Fridays in the summer, Librarians are signed into this and we will answer your questions. And if you happen to um, submit a question when the library is closed, we'll get to it the very next business day. But if you ever have any questions about how to access the databases, how to search properly, um, or anything at all, make sure that you ask a librarian for help. I hope you have fun searching for your articles and best of luck writing your papers.